Hello everyone, I'm glad to be back with another video. Today I'm going to talk about UCMLE Step 1 uh, resources and the study tips. Uh, a disclaimer, I didn't take Step 1, I took Step 2 as I highlighted in my experience. Uh, however, I think that um, since I'm taking the exam soon and I have been preparing for quite a few months, uh, I can speak about uh, the topic and my preparation plan, which was inspired by the individuals who took it before me and also many uh, on YouTube. Uh, so tune in uh, for some study tips and resources. So the step one exam is composed of two components basically. Like if you open up the first aid, which is the primary book that you're going to be using, you will find basic sciences from biochemistry to microbiology, pathology, pharmacology, and then there will be system based uh, approach. Uh, the system phase might be easier, especially if you are during your clinical rotations while you'll find the basic one easier if you were during the basic years of medical school. So I think you should start with the first aid and where do you start within the first aid? It would really depends on your current stage. Um, if you were in basic years, I would suggest that you nail the basics. If you were in the clinical, I would suggest that you kind of mix it. Like you don't go all basic, uh, like microbiology followed by biochemistry because you will feel exhausted from the amount of basic sciences being repeated um, that you have forgotten. Uh, so that's my advice on how to s kind of order your studying of the first aid. Um, how many pages per day or how many topics to cover per day is a really tricky question. Uh, it differs according to your baseline knowledge, according to the amount of time you need to memorize, how used to, you are to studying for long hours, uh, which we have discussed some tips for in another video. So in my like most honest advice, see where your base stands and trust that and start upgrading that with time. Um, and uh, the other resource is obviously QBanks and I suggest UWorld and UWorld only. I don't recommend any other QBank. They have an extensive one uh, that's very well put, amazing explanations, figures. I don't think anything matches it. Uh, and try to do it early in your preparation. So hand in hand with the first aid, once you finish studying a system or um, like probably a system, not something less than that, uh, go and study the UWorld uh, QBank that relates to the system. And don't take UWorld as testing your first aid knowledge alone, but also as a learning resource. So especially when you make mistakes, try to read out the choices uh, to learn from the uh, explanation and also when there is a near miss where you were about to make a mistake or you guessed correctly. Uh, so that's my advice for resources. Uh, to recap, do you world and first aid. Uh, many people talk about pathoma. I do understand uh, that can be helpful for many individuals. So if, I, if you felt that in the systems and the pathology part you're lacking and not everything you read seems familiar to you, I would strongly recommend uh, using uh, Pathoma in your preparation. Uh, however, you have to look at your uh, timeline. Uh, when do you want to take your exam? If you had plenty of time and you don't feel confident about your clinicals uh, or your knowledge about diseases or, you, or you're taking it before your clinical rotations, then Pathoma might be a must. Another aspect uh, that I get asked about is, should I do Kaplan lecture uh, like notes and videos? Should I do Ports and Beyond? Uh, should I do uh, Sketchy Medical, uh, either for microbiology or pharmacology? You shouldn't do them all. That, that's the first thing. Like, you should never do, in my opinion, more than one resource over First Aid and U World. Like, after First Aid and U World, don't add more than one resource. And if you add one, make sure that it's really indicated that you really need it. Otherwise, just to stick to First Aid and U World. Uh, so if you felt that you have a graphical memory, then yeah, you can rely on a sketchy. Uh, but, but mixing up many resources, like some individuals who will do boards and beyond uh, sketchy and first aid and you world, it will become really messy and you will pass the exam. Like you might pass the exam with that, but that's not the most efficient way to do it. And it will probably cause uh, exhaustion and fatigue moving into another exam or your uh, medical school or even in your life. Now, as for the UCMLE Step 2, uh, I talked about Anki in the video, and I made a separate video about Anki and its settings. I strongly recommend Anki even in Step 1. Uh, however, um, again, similar to my advice in Step 2, if it's going to take the bulk of your time, and you're really not good with flashcards, or not used to them, or you find that you are not getting used to them, 
then uh, you can drop that and not let it affect your prep. So keep your focus on the main resources. If Anki was like well suited for your time and uh, your base, then do it. Otherwise, don't. Uh, the deck I recommend for step one is the Nemozine one. Uh, it's amazing. It's based on the first aid, so it can give you this. Um, it can be your opportunity to uh, like repeat stuff and have this active spaced repetition, um, which you should have. Like even if you don't use Anki, when you make your schedule, you should have these uh, repetitions that you do. It's not like the first aid is not it's not something that you do a first pass and the second pass for. It's a book that you're learning. It's unlike you world. So in my opinion, um, you will have to schedule these revision uh, sessions and do them. If you use the Nemozine deck, then it will be doing it for you because Anki will schedule uh, your cards for you based on their difficulty, which is very amazing and efficient as well. Um, so that's my recommendation. Other resources I totally don't recommend. Like if you were to ask me in the comment section, you're very welcome. But I wouldn't recommend anything outside what I mentioned with the indications that I mentioned them with. Uh, with. Lastly, I want to finalize uh, this video with two tips. Uh, the first one is consistency over intensity. So if you were having rotations at the time, if you were having any um, family issues, if you were involved in a research project and you were committed for that or have a job, um, I think you should still have consistency over intensity. You should keep that in your mind. Like even doing as little as three pages on a bad day, it's better than doing none. Because when you do nothing on many days, it kind of become, it kind of build a resistance wall that every day propels you toward doing nothing. So try to establish consistency even at the least amount of pages, all right? Um, and the second one is to um, create study schedule, but not an ambitious four months plan that's crazy just create something for your week of course have in mind the rate that you are doing like if you were doing five pages per day you are not taking the exam in a month uh, so definitely have this long-term vision but not a long-term plan and the long-term schedule don't waste your time doing that so just have a weekly plan that you manage to adhere to and um, this will give you the sense of fulfillment that you are adhering to your plans you felt you are not able to adhere to a weekly plan make it a three-day plan not one day, okay? Just for you to have uh, this sense of control over your studying. Uh, these are my tips. And leave any questions in the comment section. I would be more than happy to answer them. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.